cavalry horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Now you can ride, ride, ride with The Lone Ranger. Yes, you can act like the Lone Ranger, think like the Lone Ranger in genuine Western adventures. Exciting Lone Ranger mysteries. Now on the backs of these popular General Mills cereals. Cheerios, Wheaties, Kicks, Sugar Jeff, and Tricks. There are 11 of these thrilling mysteries. One to a package. And you'll want to solve them all. Here's a sample. One mystery is called The Guilty Stranger. A stagecoach is robbed and there are two suspects. Which one is guilty? The Lone Ranger finds out. Can you? To help you, there's an invisible writing clue inside the package. Dip this amazing clue in water, and writing appears like magic. What's more, the back of the clue tells you how you can become an official Lone Ranger deputy with mask, badge, identification card, and hollow silver-colored bullet. Look for the Lone Ranger Mystery Adventures, now on specially marked packages of Cheerios, Wheaties, Kicks, Sugar Jets, and Tricks. Get them all and ride with the Lone Ranger! With his faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Away! The Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Toto, rode along the trail near Red Rock. They were heading southward toward the mission to visit their friend, the Padre, who had sent them a message through friendly Indians, asking them to come. It was late afternoon when the Lone Ranger and Toto reached the mission and came to a stop in the courtyard. Oh, no, no, easy, 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 easy. Easy. Welcome, my friends. I have been watching for you. It's good to see you again, Padre. Ah, your your arm is bandaged, Tonto. We ran into some trouble on the way here. Someone shot at us from ambush, and one of the bullets grazed Tonto's arm. You're most fortunate, my friends. You might have been killed. We realize that. Come inside and we'll talk. I prepared some food. Oh, thank you, Padre. <laughs> A few minutes later, inside the mission, they sat down to discuss matters. After the Lone Ranger had told the details of what had happened on the trail, he asked, And now, Padre, uh, why did you send for Toto and me? The settlers who have small farms in Green Valley are having trouble. Many of them are thinking of leaving the territory because of it. Well, what trouble do they have? Mysterious fires have broken out among their buildings at times. Also, some of their livestock have been poisoned on several occasions and their fences have been torn down, allowing their few cattle to wander. How long has that been going on, Padre? For about a month, I believe. Oh. Hank Jarrell, who owns the only large ranch in that valley, has organized his men and tried to run down the culprits, but they avoid capture. Oh, I see. Jarrell is the man who asked me to send for you, my friend. It seems one of the settlers who knew about you and knew of our friendship mentioned it to Jarrell. Jarrow came to the mission himself? See, si, several days ago. I promised to ask your help. Of course we'll do all we can. I wonder how many in the valley knew he was asking for our help. Jarrow told me no one knew except the man who had told him about you. They decided to keep the matter quiet. Good. Tonto and I will ride on to Green Valley now. We should reach there by sundown. It isn't far from here. That's true. I know you'll do all you can. But be careful, amigo. 
clever men must be at work in that valley. That's right. right. We'll be careful. Come, Toto, we go now. Adios, Padre. Adios. Adios, my friends. And may the Lord protect you. As the Lone Ranger and Toto checked their riding gear before mounting to leave the mission, they discussed what they'd heard. <laughs> steady, Scout. Steady, Father. Uh, Kimasabi, you think someone from Green Valley tried to stop us from getting to mission? I thought of that, Toto. But the Padre said he was told no one knew we'd been sent for except Hank Jarrow and one of the settlers. Ah. It's possible that the news got out somehow, and the men responsible for spreading terror in the valley may have heard it. That's right. We may camp near Green Valley. After dark, we go to Gerald's ranch. I'll wait in the shadows while you get him to come out to talk to me. Ah. All right, let's go. Steady, big fella. Easy, easy fella. Monsilver! Oh, oh. It was after supper time when Hank Jarrow and his wife, Sarah, heard a knock at the ranch house door. For well, land's sakes, I wonder who that is. Well, I'll answer it, Hank. Maybe more trouble in the valley. Is Hank in, ma'am? Oh, it's you, Mr. Mullins. Well, do come right in. Come in and have a chair, Sam. Make yourself comfortable. Thanks, Sam. I'll just go along into the kitchen while you men talk. Sit right there, Sam. I don't mind if I do. <clears throat> I was wondering if there's any news of that mask man yet that you asked the Padre to send. There is sign of him. I have my doubts if he'll show up at all. I think we're up against something nobody can fight, Sam. If I didn't have so much to give up, I'd get out of this valley. You, you would? Uh-huh. Of course, the settlers don't have much to leave, so they could easily go somewhere else. I almost wish I was one of them right now. Uh, you sure do sound discouraged, Hank. Some settlers are already thinking of clearing out. But I persuaded them to stay a while longer. Well, I reckon I'll get on back to my place now. Don't like to be riding around alone too late at night. Never know what's going to happen. Yes, that's right. If that mask on really shows up, I'll get word to you, Sam. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night, Hank. Good night. Hey, somebody coming toward the house. An Indian. Holy smoke, Abner. Hey, you. Come here. Huh? Oh, well. Uh, me come see Hank Jarrah. Is, is he with you? He's not savvy. The masked man. The padre says he rides with an Indian named Tonto. Me, Tonto? I knew it. I knew it. I'm Sam Mullins. I told Jarrah about the masked man. Then you come talk to Lone Ranger. Him see Jarrah later. Kimasabi. Hello. Is that Hank Joe? No, I, I'm Sam Mullins, a settler. I told Hank about you. Oh, I see. You and Hank are the only ones who know I was sent for? That's right. Oh. Hank didn't think you'd show up. He was downright discouraging about it a few minutes ago. But I was sure you'd get here. Well, why did Gerald think we wouldn't arrive? Don't know. He said we all ought to leave the valley. He doesn't think anyone can do anything. Said he'd go. If he didn't have so much to leave behind, better come and see Hank. He'll be surprised. I'll see him later, Sam. Uh, not right now. But I thought the Indian was heading to the ranch house to get Hank when he ran into me. That's right. I, I've changed my mind. In fact, Sam, I'd rather you don't tell Gerald we're here yet. Well, you must have your reasons. But it sure surprises me you don't want to see him right away. Uh, don't worry about it, Sam. We're here to help, but we must do it in our own way. All right, mister, whatever you say. Were you heading for home? Yeah. But now that you're here, I'm going to ride up the valley and talk to some of the settlers. Encourage them some. Then I'll head back for home. Well, where do you live? Third place south of here. We'll uh, talk to you later. All right, I'll be waiting. Good night. Hey, good night. Go ask Gerald to come out to talk to me now, Toto. I'll wait here. Uh, be careful. A 
few moments later, Hank Jarrow came out with Toto and met the Lone Ranger. You're the Lone Ranger, eh? I'm sure surprised to see you here, mister. Why, Mr. Jarrow? Well, I didn't expect you to come. Now that you're here, I hope you can do something about what's been going on. Well, we'll try our best. Say, uh, did you come straight here to my place, or did you stop at Sam Mullins' place first? Well, we came straight here. I'll leave it to you to tell Mullins we've arrived. Yeah, sure. Uh, where are you camping in case I want to get in touch with you? We're uh, camped in the grove about half a mile down the trail. You'd better keep your eyes open. Huh? The varmints who are causing the trouble seem to have a way of finding out everything. Well, thanks for the warning. Yeah. We'll leave now. Easy said a big fella. Mr. Charlie, it's here. Good night. Good night, mister. Monsieur. Hey, what's this count? Late that night, the Lone Ranger and Toto were rolled into their blankets at the camp. Suddenly, the great horse Silver raised his head and whinnied as he gazed across the small, moonlit clearing into the shadows. Toto, Silver is giving a warning. Uh, him look cross clearing. Quick, we'll slide out of our blankets and crawl into the shadows. Let's go and hurry. Uh. Continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's one the half that happy people have to pay. Eating, how we eating, and do, 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 and okay. Okay. That goes for the star wherever you are. Take Barbara Ann Scott, figure skating champion from the Northland. Watch her on this one. Barbara Ann's good. Now there is a champ who's a real Wheaties fan. Sure helps to keep a gal up on her toes. A guy, too. Take Bob Lemon, who pitches a lot of ball for the Cleveland Indians. Lemon knows what champions know. Wheaties for breakfast, away you go. Gosh, no wonder the champs of tomorrow are eating Wheaties today. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your weenies, and you'll be do-do-do, and okay, okay. Now, to continue... Awakened by a warning whinny from Silver, the Lone Ranger and Toto quickly slid from their blankets, just as a fusillade of bullets swept the clearing. The two men lay prone in the shadows, and as Toto started to reach for his gun, the Lone Ranger touched his arm to restrain him. The Indian and masked man waited, tense and quiet. Then they heard voices back in the grove. It looks like we caught him by surprise. Somebody's coming. Let's get away from here. Quick, come on. Get him. Come on. Get him. They're leaving now. Someone else is coming. Have your gun ready this time, Toto. Uh-uh. Uh, he's seal rider now. He's turning in from trail. Oh, oh, oh. Hey. Sam Mullins, who had gone to talk to some of the settlers, was returning to his own place when he heard the shooting. He approached the rolled blankets cautiously. Then, seeing Silver and Scout, he stopped in surprise. Holy mackerel, I recognize those horses. Somebody must have killed the Lone Ranger and the Indian. We're all right, Mullins. Uh, oh, man alive. I heard shooting, and then when I saw those blankets rolled up there, looking like somebody was still in them. We I... slid out of them, left them that way purposely. We had warning of what was to happen just in time. It's those mystery men again. But how did they find out you were here and where your camp is? I have an idea how they found out. First, we'll pick up the trail and see where it leads us. Then we'll make plans, Sam. Let's get going. Though the gunmen had tried to cover their tracks, the Lone Ranger and Toto managed to keep on the trail. Finally, they arrived with Sam Mullins at the rear of Jarrow's ranch. Where they stopped in the shadows. Oh, sir. Oh, 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 o
You will be for a long time. There's a light in the ranch house. I suggest you go in, see who is with Gerald, and ask him if he's heard from me. All right. Don't let him know you've seen us. Just as you say, mister. Come back and tell us what he says and what you find out. Todd and I'll be waiting at the front gate. Sure. I'll ride around to the front right now. Move now, you see. Get up. A few minutes later, Sam Mullins stood knocking on the ranch house door. Well, Sam Mullins again, eh? Come on in, Sam. Oh, thanks, thanks. You know my two cowpokes, Sleepy and Max? Oh, yeah, sure. How are you, fellas? Uh, Hi, Hi, Sam. Sam. Uh, What brought you back at this hour, Sam? It's almost midnight. I know. But you see, Hank, I couldn't wait to find out if that mask man has showed up yet. Uh, Look, I told you he wouldn't show up, didn't I? In fact, Sleepy and Max came here to tell me some bad news about the masked man and the Indian. Yeah, that's right. Bad news? What do you mean? Sleepy, tell Sam. Well, Max and I were coming in from the range when we heard shooting. Yeah, it was about a half a mile from here. That's right. We headed for the place where the shots came from and found a camp in a grove. There was a masked man and Indian rolled up in their blankets. Both dead. Dead? Great day. We came right to the house to tell the boss. And he says they were the hombres you've been expecting. Yep. I knew it was too good to be true that they'd be able to help us. The varmints who do damage in the valley are mighty smart. Smarter even than the Lone Rangers, it turns out. Don't say I didn't warn you, Sam. It sure upset all of us. Yep, sure is. Well, so long, fellas. I'll be getting on home. Yes, good night, 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 Sam. We'd better steer clear of that grove for a while. There's something else I want to do first anyway. What's that? Convince Sam Mullins he'd better leave the valley with the others. We'll ride to his place first, and then we'll ride back by the grove and see how things are there. After leaving the ranch house, Sam Mullins met Toto and the Lone Ranger and told them all that had been said. The Lone Ranger spoke. Sleepy and Max must have been the men who tried to kill us, Tonto. Ah. This proves that Hank Jarrell and his men are the ones causing all the trouble in the valley. Uh, nobody'd ever believe that. Even though I know now it must be true. Since they want you to get the other settlers together in the morning, I wouldn't be surprised if they cause more trouble tonight just to impress the settlers. Uh, maybe they'll do something at that. We'll watch the ranch house and bunkhouse tonight. They ride out, we'll follow. Half an hour later, the Lone Ranger, Toto, and Sam Mullins watched as three horsemen rode from the Jarrow Ranch. The masked man and his companions were hidden in among the trees so that they couldn't be seen, though the moonlight was bright. They said he will burn him out. Then he'll stop persuading the others to stay. Hang, Jarrow must have been talking about you, Sam. And you think they're heading for my place now? Yes, Toto and I'll follow. You go round up some of the other settlers in a hurry. I sure hope we catch them red-handed. That's the general idea. Get going, Sam. Easy, boy. Get up there. Up. All right, Toto. Now we'll follow Hank and his crooked cowpokes. Said he'd be coming easy. Yeah, easy, fella. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. Oh, left their horses in the shadows and cautiously approached the rear of Sam Mullen's barn, where the other three men had stopped and dismounted. They're taking their time, Toto. Of course, they know they can't be seen from the house. Ah. Them show plain in moonlight. One fellow went in the barn. The other two are waiting for him. There he comes now. Yeah, I found a whole can of kerosene in the back. Split it against the side of the barn. Then we'll touch a match to it to get out of here fast. Yeah, all right. The can's empty now. I have some matches. All right, we'll light them and get the fire started. Come on, Toto, this is the showdown. Uh-huh. Cautiously, the masked man and Indian eased around the corner of the barn with guns ready. 
Then the Lone Ranger spoke sharply. Reach all of you and pass. Holy smoke, what's the mess, man? What he's dead, you can't be. You fools, you slipped up somewhere. Cut him down. Quiet. The Lone Ranger and Tonto were partially protected by the corner of the building as the bullets from Sleepy and Max's guns whined toward them. The two crooks ran toward the open barn doors. They fired. Oh, my arm. Several more minutes went by. Then the Lone Ranger and Tonto cautiously moved around the corner of the barn and approached the doorway. Just as Sleepy's hand appeared holding a gun. No, I'll fix it. You're through. Oh, I give up. Tonto quickly moved forward and picked up the guns the crooks had dropped. It was then that Sam Mullins, who had gone to round up the settlers, approached the scene with several men. Here come the settlers, Tonto. To turn these crooks over to them to take to jail. Oh, 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 oh. Help, help us. Gun down these settlers. Wait, don't listen to him. That he... You all right, mister? Yes, Sam. Me, me. That masked man and the Indian are the ones who caused all the trouble. Yeah, I don't savvy all this. Looks like he wounded Hank. Yeah, sure does. Man, I told you what you'd find here. I know for a fact that Hank Jarrell and those two cowpokes of his, Sleepy and Max, are to blame for all that's happened. But why would Hank do that? Yeah, he had to fire at his place once. That's right. Hank Jarrell wants to see all of you leave this valley. That's why he and his men created terror among you. A fire at his place would throw off suspicion. Uh, Sam Mullins told him Toto and I might come here to help you. Hank acted as if he wanted us to come. Well, he did. But only so that he and his gunmen could murder us. They tried that but failed. And I'm sure now they tried to ambush us this morning. You can't prove that, mister. You were the only man who knew where we were camping. They spread kerosene on the side of Sam's barn a while ago. They were about to set it afire when we interfered. Sleepy and Max will go to jail for attempted murder. Hey, you can't do that to us. We work for Hank Jarrell. We do what we're told. He always told us what trouble to start. That's right. Hank wanted the settlers to get out. Shut up, you fools. I reckon you've heard enough, men. Yeah, we we sure it. have, oh, Sam. Right, we By thunder, we'll take the three of them to the sheriff and tell them everything. Oh, there are right. enough of you to take charge of these men. Otto and I are glad to have been of help. We'll leave now, knowing that Green Valley is no longer a valley of terror. That's right. Adios, everybody. Adios. Adios. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks for Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Well, we'll bandage your wounds and take you to town, Hank. Remember what you said about the varmints who caused the trouble in the valley being smarter even than the Lone Ranger? <laughs> well, it looks like you have to take that back now, huh, fellas? <laughs> hey, hey, Sam. Is that who the masked man is? Yep. That's who he is, all right. Well, I'll be doggone. Imagine that. The Lone Ranger. Copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time. <laughs>